So what is up YouTube? How's it going? Alex here from Hoppos again. So in our last video, we just went over a wishbone install. And in this video, we're going over a Y-bone install. And a lot of you guys are asking questions on how to do it and um, know exactly what is a Y-bone, what is a wishbone. So in our last video, we did cover uh, what a wishbone was. In this video, we're going to be covering what a Y-bone is and the difference are between both of them. So Ever wonder how to put a Y bone on? That's exactly what we're gonna be doing on this video. And we're gonna be doing it on this charcoal, sexy, sexy charcoal 62 Impala rag. So right here, what you see, this is a Y bone. The Y bone is gonna be a replacement uh, suspension product that is gonna keep the rear end centered on any 59 to 64 Impala. Um, so what this is right here, this is gonna mimic the stock banana bar that goes in on the suspension now. Uh, right now, on pretty much if your vehicle is stock, you're gonna have a banana bar that comes over from, from the rear end to the frame. So this would be the rear end side and this would be the frame side. Actually, let me grab the stock one real quick. Um, just for the video's sake, I did already remove some of this stuff and uh, I'll grab both of them just so you can see what they are. So, that right there, my friends, is a stock banana bar. So, that is what we're going to be replacing in this video, along with the panhard bar. So, the panhard bar, this is going to be the guy that causes your rear end to shift from left and right. So, a lot of times, guys ask how to run skirts or, uh, you know, how to keep the rear end centered on their uh, Impalas when they're, you know, lifting it on hydros or air. This will work for either or. This will also work for stock suspension as well. The stock suspension is going to keep it a lot more sturdier down the street. And it's going to keep that rear end centered up so you don't get that, that little booty jiggle down the road. So it's a pretty simple install. And we are doing this on the floor. Um, just like if you guys would be doing it in your garage. So we are mimicking the same thing. I actually prefer to do Y-bone installs on the floor. Um, it's just a lot easier to use tooling and to use... Um, uh, jacks and stuff to keep everything centered up. So if you watched the wishbone video in our last uh, episode, um, we went over some of the basic tips and tricks on how to do it. And it's going to be very similar on uh, the process of how to do it. You want to keep the rear end centered. Without centering the rear end, when you put this in, the rear end is not going to be centered. It's that simple. Um, so we'll go over a few steps on how to do it. Uh, again, we already did remove the panhard bar. And this side was connected to the frame, that side was connected to the rear end, and on the banana bar, this side was connected to the rear end, that side was connected to the frame. On this, it really doesn't matter much, um, but as you can see, it is the same, uh, same width of it, or uh, length of it, and this is also adjustable down here. And we do that just so you could correct your pinion. Now, one thing I do got to note real quick, if you have, and which we'll go under here real quick, all right, hopefully you can see. If you have shims behind this bracket, we do recommend to take those out. Um, our Y-bone is designed to eliminate the shims, that way it sits straight on there. And on the opposite side, if there's, a, there's that little hump over there, I don't know if you can see it in the video, it's a dead center of the camera right now. That little hump is going to be the platform where you're going to put your secondary bracket. So you do want to eliminate all the shims. So we're going to go over kind of step one here. Um, we are doing a full airbag install on this, so we did remove the coil springs out of here, as you can see. Um, this isn't going to be necessary for you. You guys aren't. If you guys are doing just a Y-bone install, um, the only thing you're going to have to remove, which I would recommend re removing, would be the two shocks on the bottom. You could leave them hanging from the top side, but uh, on the bottom side, you could just remove them, let them hang out of the way for now. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to kind of push the rear end around and uh, manipulate it to get it centered. Um, naturally, these rear ends are going to want to shift to the left, um, especially if they're hanging, because the natural, you know, the memory on the, the rubber and the, the brackets, uh, the panhard bar normally pulls it to the left when it's extended in the downward position. So the way we normally do this here is I'm going to do it kind of midway, and I'm going to put this up slightly a little bit more than where it's at now. And um, you can see we got a strap hook to here. Um, it's not tight yet because I haven't centered it up, but this strap is going to be to pull the wren back over to the passenger side. A lot of times and pretty much every single time I've done this, the wren has always been more towards the driver's side door. So we're going to pull that wren back over here. So by doing that, we're hooking that to the bottom of the shock, the stud pretty much, like this stud on the opposite side. 
Uh, we're hooking it to there and we're just hooking it to the frame mount or just any hole, anything that's gonna get you good grip. And we're gonna use this strap to pull it over and get it centered up. As you can see, I got a jack on it on the bottom. Um, you're gonna have to do that when you remove the banana bar. And we're gonna try to squeeze down here. It's a little hard because I am doing this by myself. So, and recording it. Doing it by yourself isn't bad. It's just, well, trying to record it and do it by yourself. That's when it gets a little tough. So, the banana bar is normally hooked right there to the rear end to, oh, sorry, kind of went out of focus there. So, to this bracket here and to that bracket that is up there. So, remove the banana bar, step one. Step two, remove the pan hard bar. The pan hard bar is going to be the one that hooks to this frame mount there and to this bracket or this uh, double sided stud here. Um, remove those guys out completely. And this again, this Y bone is made to keep the rim centered. Um, you know, lift it up or down on hydraulic or air. This is great. Now, if you're doing this on, let me crawl out of here real quick. If you're doing this on hydraulic, uh, we don't recommend normally anything bigger than a 12 inch cylinder for these. Um, anything past a 12 inch cylinder, you are going to start stretching the Y bone. Um, you want to go into a wishbone at that point, and that's going to be covered in the other video if you guys want to. If anything, I'll link over to that so you guys, um, if you guys are doing high lockup, uh, if you guys are doing three wheel, uh, any type of hopping, stuff like that, a wishbone is definitely going to be recommended rather than a Y bone. This is going to be for the guys that are going to just lay, play, cruise, you know, lift up and down. It's going to be a lot simpler. And on top of this, this is a full Bolton, so this requires zero cutting whatsoever. Um, the wishbone on the opposite side is tons of cutting, tons of modification, tons of welding. So this is a great option if your rand's already chromed, then you can just slap this guy on without ruining any of the chrome and spending more money or going backwards. So that is going to be one of the main differences on that. Um, of course, this is a lot simpler of an install compared to a uh, wishbone. So if you're not too familiar with this or not too mechanically inclined but want to attempt it yourself, um, you know, we're here to walk you through the steps of what it will take to do this. So don't hesitate to call us. We will help you out. Um, that's also what this video is for, to make it a lot easier for you guys. So with that being said, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, get this rear end, see how it's on the jack. We're going to get this up a little bit higher. That way I can measure from the back side of the drum to the frame. And then I can measure from the front side of the drum to the body and try to get a happy medium measurement in between it, get it straight. Um, that way it's driving down the road straight and we don't have to worry about any issues with it, you know, doing this down, down the road while you're uh, hitting the switch up or down. Um, again, this could go for hydraulic air or stock suspension. You can use the Y bone for either or. Um, the Y bone is listed on our website right here for 350. It does come with, uh, this is all solid D or this is all DOM inch and a quarter 120 wall, uh, fully adjustable with the track section here and slight pivot. We do the slight pivot to eliminate any type of cracking here. You'll see a lot, a lot of uh, Y bones out on the market that are solid here. And over time, you'll start, start to see stress cracks come on, this, on the tubing here. And that's why originally we designed it with some type of little pivot here. Um, this pivot doesn't um, affect any of the driving. This actually makes the driving experience better. We also do it with a full adjustment here. That way you could correct your pinion and when you eliminate those shims, some cars have the shims, some cars don't have the shims. Uh, of course, that's something that you know GM does, because um, even GM they allow for slight variations, or you know from factory back in the day. Um, that's why you get door shims, body shims, fender shims, and same thing banana bar shims. So this is going to be your adjustment to get that pinion. You're going to want to get that pinion within three degrees. Normally on this, you're going to get this guy pretty pretty straight. Um, being that you're only going to be going on max of a 12 inch cylinder and on air suspension you're only going to get about 10 inches of movement on air suspension. So this is going to be the perfect setup for a lay and play guy. Um, these do come raw steel. We did just go ahead and paint these black for this install here. Um, these are fully TIG welded and these are one of the strongest ones you can find on the market. Um, again, you kind of want to go with one that's going to have um, like ours have polyurethane bushings here and even the center sleeve we start those out as solid material and we actually machine these out that way it's seamless so we try to cover everything on this that way it's strong and you're getting your money's worth on it so we're gonna go ahead and start this process I'm gonna get this jacked up a little bit higher over here and I'm gonna get the first measurements going and uh, we'll get the strap tightened up that way we get this uh, rear end centered up perfect so stay tuned with us and uh, I'll continue on with this video 
All right, so if you guys could see, hopefully this glare isn't too much for you guys. We went ahead and mounted the main crossover from the frame to the rear end here. Um, we did tighten the top up completely because that's not going to change anymore. The bottom is snugged up, but it's uh, still loose. And we're going to do that that way we can uh, correct pinion later on. But right now, we're not too worried about the pinion. We're ma mainly worried about getting the center, the rear end center from left and right. So you can see here, we uh, already put the, the secondary bracket on. And the way I like doing this is I normally put the bracket on um, before I put the wishbone or the Y bone up, sorry. Um, that way it's, it's easier, eliminates the headache of you trying to do it down here underneath the car. But it also gives you a better idea of where this is gonna sit. Right here on, on the frame. So what you wanna do is you wanna try to get this guy as level as you can with the other side. So we'll get a measuring tape and measure it out. And you wanna try to get this thing as squared up as possible as well. Um, of course, that's the main goal is to keep this rear end centered, so that's why you're going to do that. So another thing is make sure you're placing the bolts in a position to where you're going to be able to get this bolt out later on down the road. Um, you don't want to put the head of the bolt on this side because the frame is right here. And with that bolt being so long, you'll never be able to get it out. And you don't want to take this whole thing apart again just to take one bolt out. So we always put, and uh, you see this is the nylock nut, we do nylock and crush. So we always put those towards the frame side. That way it's easier for you to remove it down the road. Um, so we're gonna get this guy centered up again. Um, it's, it was somewhat centered up, but it, being that you know I'm, I'm sitting here leaning on it right now, it is probably out of center. Um, and we are gonna push this guy up just a little bit just to make it easier for ourselves while installing it. So go ahead and show you guys that next. All right, so I got this guy jacked up to where I wanted to. I did rest it down on two sets of stands, one on each side of um, the adapter. And I do it right on the inside of the adapter before the threads, that way it doesn't you know, mess up the threads. So as I went up, surprisingly, I actually had to uh, swap the strap around. So I actually put the strap going the opposite way. Uh, that's probably the first time ever I had to do that on this. But it's probably because I actually went up a little bit higher than I normally do. So I actually had to swap the strap. I was about half an inch off. So where I'm measuring from, and I'm using a few different measuring, I'm actually measuring from the corner of this bracket right here. That way I could push the corner of my tape right in that factory seam. Then I'm measuring here. So it's reading, it's literally reading five inches dead center. Um, if you come from this side, or actually right to the edge of the back side of the hub, it's reading five inches. Um, your measurement's gonna be different than my measurement because this is a shortened rear end. So depending on where they shortened it at, or how much they shortened it, that is gonna change. So, and on the opposite side, same thing, we got a stand over here. And, let me hold this with my left hand, and I'm measuring from the same exact point, corner, to the edge of there and this is reading I mean, it's kind of hard to see from here but I actually stuck my head inside the wheel well and it's reading dead center five as well so um, I measure normally measure there I know this one's a little hard one because the frame is tapered I let me measure here um, and I already did all those measurements um, but the biggest thing is you just want to check to make sure you're centered up so do this measurement three four times get up you know if you touch the rim do the measurement again and I stress that because a lot of times people will go and push on this or lean on this or when they're getting out from the bottom side of the car you know they kind of push off of it and that will change your measurement so make sure you measure 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 you want to you rather measure a whole bunch of times than drilling a whole bunch of holes so um, this is only gonna be a three hole drill on here so it makes it very simple and um, I'll show you guys a little trick that I do because especially like in a car like this which is undercoated black it's gonna be, well, you can see it's black. What we're using is just some silver spray paint. Um, I've learned that over the past you know, times I've done it. You try to use a Sharpie or a marking pin, um, you just can't see it. And it's really hard to, you know, you don't wanna guess. So what I do is when I'm doing this, I just hold that bracket up with one hand. With the other hand, I just spray you know, where the three holes are at and that gives me a perfect uh, lineup of where my holes are gonna have to be drilled. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next and um, it's a little hard for me to film that with one hand plus hold the spray paint in the other hand plus hold the bracket in the hand that I don't have. So I'm going to put this phone down, I'm going to do it real quick and I'll run through it once uh, you know, I show you guys or once I'm done with it. Alright so here's after the spray paint. So this is on the passenger side of the frame 
If you look down the car, I'm underneath. I'm sitting, or sorry, on the driver's side of the frame. I'm laying underneath the, the driver's side over here. Um, I put the bracket up. Here's my spray paint marks. The top one's a little blotched out because I couldn't really reach it, but I did get it in there, um, and I know more or less where it's at. You could also uh, just verify and measure it. Um, now that you know where it's at, you could actually go in and uh, do it again with a Sharpie now because you'll actually be able to see where you're marking. So this is my third hole up here, and these are the two bottom holes down here. So now I'm going to just get my drill. Um, I'm just using the standard electric drill, and I have, uh, I think, a unit bit on there that goes up to a half an inch. Um, and I'm going to stop it right before the half an inch. I'm, I am running uh, 3 8 bolts in here, so that's what I'll do next. But this is the easiest way. And again, I just put this bracket up like so, put it up to the frame. Um, I did get my measurement from left and right, make sure I'll center it up and uh, not you know too high or too low. And um, that's how I just got my spray paint mark. As you can see, if I lift this, you'll see the holes are right behind it. So. There you guys go. I'm gonna drill this out now, and then next step will begin the bolts in here and mounting this guy up. So all three holes are drilled now. You can see I was right on my spray paint marks. Um, now I'm just gonna grab the bolts, slap the bracket in, and normally what I do is I push the bracket to the back side up here. That way it doesn't interfere with what I'm doing. So now you just get this guy and just line up your holes and drop your bolts in. Uh, a lot of times what I do is I actually will put the bolts from this way and go in this way. It's just a lot easier to hold them from the back side um, just because you're kind of limited on space back there and then I'll tighten it from the front. So um, that's exactly how these this side's done over here. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. And once we do that, we'll get everything snugged up, tightened up. And the next step is gonna be just double checking your measurements, make sure you're centered up again. And if you're not, that's where that heim joint is going to come in effect. You could adjust it real fine tune it to get it close to what you need. Um, normally when I do this, I normally don't have to because I'm on jack stands. I don't really push against the rear end, but I will double check my measurements to make sure that this is going to be centered up. So just to give you guys an idea, again, you know, I'm doing this on the floor. Uh, I'm doing this exactly how you guys would be doing it. And I'm not using any tools differently than what you guys. I'm not using any plasmas, any you know, welders, nothing like that. Again, this is a full bolt-in. I'm using standard hand drill. Um, you can see I got it right here. I'm using just a Makita with a Unibit on there. You can pick up Unibits anywhere. Um, this one is a Milwaukee bit from Home Depot. Um, you know, a lot of guys will go with the Harbor Freight ones. You can do that as well. They just don't last as long. Um, but they are decent for you know a couple bucks to do a few, few holes if you don't have the correct drill bit. No, it's perfect. I like using these because they're shorter, so it's a lot easier to get in here between, you know, the bracket and the rear end. If you had a standard uh, 3 8 drill bit or, uh, you know, like a 7 16 drill bit, it's going to be real long, and it's just harder to get in there. So that's why I like using the unit bit. Plus, it's just a lot easier because um, you're starting off the little small pilot hole and it opens it up. So um, get this guy tightened up now, and I'll toss you on the next side. All right, guys, so you got that bracket mounted up. Everything has been tightened up. Uh, we went ahead and tightened the bracket over there. We tightened uh, the jam nuts on both of the heim and the adjuster. We put the shocks back on. And um, in between all that, we got a secondary measurement. Everything was looking good. Uh, everything was looking solid, straight. So this job is pretty much done. So it took me about an hour and 15 minutes to do this. Um, that's with uh, you know recording this as well. So I'd say average person would take this uh, about an hour and 45, you know, two hour job, you know, trying to find the tools and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. Um, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you. Um, if you guys purchased our Y-Bone and you're looking on how to install it, there you guys go. Um, now that this is all centered up, you can get the rims back on. In our case, we are going to be putting air suspension on, so uh, we won't be doing that right now. But this will pretty much uh, finish up the video on the Y-Bone. And you can see the clearance up there, um, you know, the oversized washers and everything like that. So this is definitely a solid, solid Y-bone. And this is something that it's a great upgrade for, uh, you know, stock suspension, hydraulic or air suspension. Uh, hydraulic is good up to a 12 inch cylinder. So I know I've repeated that a few times, but that is a, like a number one question we always get asked. So why not go over it, right? So again, thank you guys for following. 
So again, thank you guys for following. Um, I'm still underneath the car right now on my belly. But uh, thank you guys for following. Uh, if you liked this video, if this video helped you, like, subscribe, share it, please. Camera focus, there we go. Um, you know the same old thing. Like, subscribe. Uh, find us on Instagram if you don't uh, already have us. Uh, we post a lot more of uh, useful content on there as well. Um, and this will pretty much conclude the video for Y-Bone. If you guys have a wishbone and you're trying to figure it out, we do have another video um, that was posted previous to this one on how to do a wishbone. So thank you guys. You guys have a great day and uh, enjoy.